We live? All right. Guess we'll wait for a couple people to show up. Um, I hope everyone is safe and practicing social distancing. Um, I have been with my family at home, all four of us. Nina, my camera operator. Max, my administrative man, and my wife Maria, the the woman behind the, the man. And uh, uh, we're here. Uh, how are we doing? We got some people there. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. Uh, so listen, um, I want to welcome everybody to. And tell you a little bit about uh, about it. Um, Asbury Park. I've been coming to Asbury Park for years. I started bringing bands down here uh, when people wanted to get out of New York City and they wanted to have something gritty and and and, and cool uh, and but not be in like New York City. So I'd say, hey, let's go to Asbury Park. And we'd come down here and we'd have the run of the place. It would be in the late '80s. Uh, nobody was here. It was having like having a movie set for yourself and to yourself. And of course the um, the history uh, of music in Asbury Park is really strong, uh, starting back in the day on uh, Springwood Avenue with all the jazz that was here, uh, moving into um, you know the era of uh, Bruce Springsteen and uh, and and time really with the uh, the Convention Hall where um, all the great bands, uh, classic rock bands, played there at the Convention Hall. Uh, Led Zeppelin. The Who, The Clash, um, The Rolling Stones, you know, everybody played there, uh, except for the Beatles is what I understand. And so it has a really strong identity to music, um, and I've always loved it. I used to come to the Stone Pony and hope that I would see Bruce Springsteen there, and uh, I never did until later on in my life. So, um, But uh, you know, I ended up here in Asbury Park uh, as it started to have a resurgence. You know, I was still coming to the shows here and hanging out. I had uh, my friend Tim Donnelly and I put on a show, a Bruce Springsteen show when Bruce turned 60, called uh, Be True uh, on, the, on the boardwalk in Asbury Park. And um, that was when we started dreaming about, um, you know, what could happen here in Asbury Park. There's a great uh, art culture, music, art, surfing. Um, there's, you know, great, you know, in in a town that was wasn't doing that well, like a lot of the artists really thrive, and the musicians, and and um, and I really credit the, a lot of them with uh, bringing back the community, and um, and so uh, I spent a lot of time here, and uh, they they started to uh, I Star began building some uh, businesses here. Um, they built the Asbury Hotel um, with Salt Hotels, and. Uh, and created this really cool boutique hotel. And um, there was a great room there that wasn't being used at the time. And I ran into a friend of ours on the boardwalk, uh, Lisa Poggi, who's in the real estate here. And she is working with um, the Asbury Hotel. And she said, hey, um, I, have a, I have a space um, at the Asbury Hotel and they're looking to put a gallery show in there um, to fill it up and create some excitement around the, around the space. And at the time, our friend uh, Tina Karekis had a shop on the boardwalk. And my wife Maria and I would, would stop in all the time. And she had art and really great furniture uh, in there and um, was just a great person, had a great vibe. And long story short, when we secured this space to do the show, um, her space had um, the lease was up. So she ended up. Um, agreeing to come on, bring her vibe here, bring her furniture uh, and that into the gallery and create a space that has art, uh, has a great vibe. And uh, we also asked iStar if we could have a back line and have some live music here. And so um, long story short, it was a three month pop-up store. And here we are four years later and we're still here. And it's a place of community and um, it's a gathering place for friends. Um, people love to come here. We have live music, people come and listen. They actually listen here. Musicians love playing here because the sound is really good and because people come here to hang out and listen. Um, they can bring their kids, they can bring their dogs. Uh, we always have a great time. And uh, speaking of community, 
Um, it's, um, you know, this, this little talk that I'm giving and the sale that I'm having on the prints, 50% um, of all the sales are going to go to um, two charities here in Asbury Park. And there's a lot of great ones here, a lot of people doing great work always, and we try to contribute to as many as possible. Um, but um, Interfaith Neighbors is one of the charities, and um, Asbury Park Dinner Table. Asbury Park Dinner Table is uh, actually taking food from the, boxing up food from the local businesses, restaurants here, and bringing them to the needy. So it's actually helping out not only um, the needy, but also small businesses here in Asbury Park, which is super important. And, uh, and then Interfaith um, has been giving back to the community in ways of, um, they've aligned themselves with uh, Meals on Wheels for Monmouth and Ocean County. And uh, they also have a rental and a mortgage assistance program, which is um, really important, especially now. And um, we are all grateful to these type of organizations here in Asbury Park and we hope to raise some money for them. You can go to their websites also, and uh, you can donate whatever you can to them. Whatever it is you can donate, I think they would appreciate it. If you can't afford to print, um, if you just have a couple bucks to spare, uh, any of it will help. So if you go to their websites or their Facebook pages, um, you know, you'll be able to, to help out there. So uh, again, I, you know, I, I thank my family and I thank uh, iStar, and the Asbury Hotel, um, and you know Jay Sugarman from iStar, giving us this spot, uh, and all the support from 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 them has been essential, and we're happy to be here. So, uh, with that said, I'm going to take a little walk around the gallery, and give you a little uh, sightseeing. Um, so, you come in through here. Uh, we're you know we're used to having a bunch of friends around. Uh, now we're you know we're all many feet away, <laughs> and uh, you come around here. And I'll show you the spot. We've got Max Clinch over here, my wife Maria. You guys probably know her, you know him. And um, as you come through, uh, we have these movable walls that allow us to rearrange the furniture when we have a lot of people playing in here. If we're having a party, uh, we're having a, you know, a gallery show, uh, we have some bands playing, we can move these around. This Bruce Springsteen we took in New Jersey at, uh, at um, Sandy Hook. Thank you, Cody Cutter. Um, and we have some swag in here. Uh, we have um, uh, some more images here. We have uh, one of my favorites, um, um, my morning jacket photograph. Tom Waits on the carousel. We talk about that. Florence in the machine. Um, and. Uh, you know, this one's over here, the Prez Hall one I always loved. Uh, took that at, in the Domin Dominican Republic. And here's some art in here from uh, when uh, Mike McCready and Kate did the, um, did the art piece for us here. Little Jack Johnson. Um, I'll bring you back here. This is, a, um, this is kind of like we call it the green room. Uh, so we painted it green. But this is where I come if I need to just have a sandwich or chill out for a minute. Um, we also uh, framed all these in vintage frames, which is really cool. I love the feel of that. They really bring a warm feeling to these images. Um, and it's like a nice salon style. Tina put this up. Um, Patty Smith and uh, some Metallica. It's pretty cool. Lucinda Williams. Um, I just did the new Lucinda Williams record. I'm a big fan of Lucinda's. And you guys got to hear that record. It's really killer. Check it out. Um, and, uh, you know, some more stuff here. And then if you come around the corner, uh, also what's good about this place is if you go to the bathroom, you have more art on the walls, contact sheets from years and years of a work of mine. Um, some Springsteen, you got Clarence, Tom Waits. We have Sonic Youth, Kim Gordon. Um, there's some Nora Jones in here and Willie. And listen, you know, I, I, I think it's um, it's only a positive when you're in the bathroom because a lot of people <laughs> spend time here and you got things to look at. Eminem, D12, it's all good. 
So, um, as we come down here, um, we have some more images, and like I said, a lot of all these images will be for sale. Um, you can DM Tina at Transparent Clinch Gall at Transparent Clinch Instagram, or you can also email her, Tina Karekis at Gmail, K E R E K E S. I put it on my Instagram. You'll see that information there. Um, and so, uh, you know, this is cool because it's like a little salon wall. And what happens is that I do shows all around, really all around the world. And I have additional images coming up and I have new images I've shot. And I'm printing new, I'm printing new images because I love them because they're brand new. Or it's, uh, it comes from another show. And we just start to switch them out now and again. We switch out, you know, a good radio head with a newer radio head. Or we have a show, um, for example... Um, I did something with the Christian Ann Carr Fund, and uh, and we framed a bunch of these large prints in really beautiful old frames, which I'll point out later. And uh, and then we just mix them up every time. We're, so we're constantly changing the images in here, and it's really fun. Um, one of my favorite new images I took is of Bruce Springsteen, and uh, I'll tell some stories about that later as we move through. Uh, here's some of these images. Um, from that show for the Kristen Ann Car Fund. Uh, this Tupac looks beautiful in that silver frame. Um, Bob Dylan, Tom Waits. Uh, I know a lot of people love uh, Elliot Smith as well. And uh, I remember taking this photograph right over by what is now that um, the big Brooklyn uh, arena there. Um, the name's slipping my mind, but um, where the Nets play. <laughs> That's right where the that Barclay was taken. Center. The Barclays Center. Yeah. And here's some, uh, this, is some this is some good uh, uh, Asbury Park legend right here. Southside Johnny, Bruce Springsteen, Stephen Van Zandt. I took that uh, a couple of years ago at the Asbury Park Music and Film Festival, uh, which I'm also a part of. Uh, if we come over here, um, we have... Uh, this is kind of our jam spot. It's like this is where our live music happens. Um, it's always a really great time. We, we really, you know, pack this place out. Uh, people come with their kids, with their dogs, like I said. Um, and we've had uh, some really great shows here. This, um, uh, th this is uh, Supro Guitars. Uh, the folks at Supro have been really, really nice, kind to us. It's send us guitars to play, amplifiers. Um, and they sound good. I play my harmonica through um, through this amp right here, which still has um, paint on it from uh, Kate and Mike McCready. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, so this guitar actually came through, and I and I uh, I had to get it. It seems like to me, people tell me that it's like a Frankenstein. It's like maybe a harmony body and a airline neck and headstock for you guitar geeks there <laughs> but it actually sounds good in fact uh, uh, Bruce Springsteen stopped in here one day and uh, gravitated towards this thing and picked it up um, so okay oh yeah uh, no I'm going to talk about all the images later I'm going to come back around and do an image talk um, so we have uh, the Beastie Boys over here and um, earlier, those of you who might have come by earlier um, may have seen uh, Lamar's record collection. It's not to be missed. And you will be, uh, you'll be, your, your pocket will be a little bit lighter if you have a record player and you come in here. Because you can get Bow Wow Wow in excess, a couple of random, I'm going to just do a couple of randoms here. Not looking. It's, they're always good. They're all good. They're all good. Oh, <laughs> Robert Redford, Jeremiah Johnson. Okay, I'm going to go just a little bit. These are randomized, I'm telling you. What's this? Wow. Clear light. <laughs> Clear light. Okay, I'm not familiar with that one. Maybe I'm striking out here. No, I'm not striking out. Look at that. Told you. 
Mm-hmm. And one little bit for deep cuts. We'll see what we have in here. The reggae is always, always deep. Uh, so good. You're going to have to come here for these, though. One more reggae cut. Oh, look at that. Hold it straight. Small right. horsewoman. Thanks, Lamar. These are these are awesome. Okay, um, so let's see. Uh, I was going to actually answer a couple of questions uh, that came earlier. Um, Nina, do you recall what those uh, who who asked those questions? Yeah. So this first one is from LV Images, and they ask. Would love to hear about Eddie Vedder on longboard with a ukulele shot. That photo is amazing. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, so that photograph actually is on the cover of my still moving book, Eddie Vedder on the cover, um, forward by Bruce Springsteen. And, uh, I mean, I could go on and on with these stories. This could be a very long story. But since I have a bunch more to tell, I'll keep it short. Um, one of my people have often asked me what's your favorite photo shoots and this has to be one of them because Eddie Vedder invited me to Oahu on the North Shore to photograph for his ukulele record and uh, myself and my buddy Gary went out there to photograph we spent our days wandering around um, the North Shore looking for cool sp spots chasing the light and we had this idea of Eddie in a suit uh, on a longboard paddling through this beautiful little river. And uh, we went down there and um, it, was, uh, it, was, it was gorgeous out. We had a beautiful shoot. And um, uh, what happened at the time, it was myself, Gary, and Dave Holmesy, who is a cinematographer and friend of ours in, uh, in, in Oahu. And the, the um, tsunami uh, alarm went off. And we were all sitting there and like, Dave lives in Hawaii and Ed spends a lot of time there. And, I was just like, what's that? And they said, it's the tsunami uh, siren, and it usually goes off at Tuesday at 3 o'clock every Tuesday as a to test, and it is not Tuesday, and it's not 3 o'clock. And so we all got really nervous, and we, like, <laughs> wrapped everything up and, like, shuffled out and found out it was a false alarm. Um, but uh, two other things about that photograph. One is when the book came out, um, uh, shortly after, I got a... Uh, a box in the, in the, in the mail, um, the U.S. mail, which is very important to us. And um, it was a box, I opened it up, and in it was a letter from Eddie along with that ukulele. And Eddie said that he wanted to gift that to me um, and that he had played for the whales in Hawaii on that ukulele and he had written some songs on it and that he was passing it on to me uh, because I had now made it fit more famous than he had and because uh, he's such a humble and wonderful guy. And so anyway, I got that uh, ukulele. And the other thing about that is, uh, for those of you who haven't seen the, um, uh, the Instagram post, I have eight by 10 photographs signed without, without the writing on it, of course. They're actual photographs um, signed by me uh, of that Eddie Vedder photograph, eight by 10. For $125, I have 50 of them. There's and 20 left, there's according there's to Tina. 20 Tina. left. <laughs> so, first come, first serve. Uh, I wanted to offer something to folks that um, would allow people to um, uh, to get something and to donate as well. Uh, so, excited about that. Um, do we have another question? Or? We do have another question. How <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, the light in here is beautiful. These are big, huge, I don't know if you can see these. Um, these are big vinyls of, uh, of artists that we put up on the windows. Um, Eddie, Patti Smith. Um, yeah, as you go around, um, you look over here is Johnny Ramone. <laughs> and this surfboard was done by Travis Reynolds and I. Uh, he's a shaper out of uh, San, San Jose. Uh, and um, we put photographs on one side, and on the other side, check this out, I, I really, I love this, I love this piece. The other side is 
set lists from all those shows. So Radiohead, Metallica, um, Pearl Jam. Look at that Pearl Jam set list. Given to Fly, Wygo, Corduroy, Got Some, Once, Worldwide Suicide, Small Town, Amongst, Even Flow. I mean, incredible. And then one of those photographs is on the other side. Um, my Morning Jacket from One Big Holiday. Amazing. And uh, there's one on here. I'm trying to think of. Where's that one? If I can find it. Um, <laughs> Which one? I'm looking for the one. There was one I thought that I put up there that I have. Oh, oh here it is. So this, this one over here was from the Stone Pony. And it was a benefit. And uh, Bruce invited me out. To I thought to photograph, but he invited me to come and play harmonica. And on this set list is written on there, um, you know, the tunes that I played on, uh, like Pink Cadillac. And then Bruce threw in, like, I got my mojo working. He was like, that one's for you, Danny. And then I ended up singing uh, backup, uh, backup vocals with Southside for Spirit. Uh, oh, we're back. Oh. We're good. <laughs> so anyway, um, I was next to Southside. Johnny singing back up for Spirit in the Night. And if you think I'm dreaming, I probably I probably was. It might have it might have happened. <laughs> um, um, you want another question? Yeah, what do you got? Um, one from Franklin Gams or Jams. Uh, I would love to hear your stories about shooting Tom Petty. There is a Tom mm. Petty print on your website that blows me away. It's a really eerie one that has a cool reflection in the glass. I would love to hear the story of that shoot. Mm. Wow. Um, I do have that Tom Petty photograph here. Um, I wasn't really prepared. If I get lucky enough, I might be able to find it quickly. Let's see. I think I. So um, this is the photograph right here. Hold up straight. Hold it up. Yeah, there you go. And I took this photograph during uh, Highway Companion, Tom Petty record, which is a great record, by the way. I, I really love it. And um, I, uh, I was invited there to photograph him, and um, we were shooting in and around his house, his home studio. And as we were walking from one spot to the next, we came across this, um, this, this hallway that had like a, a Buddha statue at the very end. And I could see, as, as he walked through, I could see this reflection on the glass when the door opened. And really it was just the spontaneity of like chasing the light and seeing a moment happen in front of you. And I, I just asked him to stay there and I adjusted the door a little bit and I shot the reflection there. And you can just see his yard, you can see the statue in the back, and of course Tom looking out at me. And I recall the last uh, time I saw Tom Petty, um, I was at Music Cares um, event in, um, in Los Angeles uh, during the Grammys for uh, Tom, honoring Tom Petty. And uh, Jackson Brown was there and Tom Petty was there and we were having a conversation. And, um, and I said, hey fellas, uh, do you mind if I, if I grab, grab a photograph of you two? Uh, and, and Tom just paused in the, the way he usually talks. Like, so low key, and he just said, Danny, when does anybody mind if you take their photo? And that was the last uh, thing that I, I, the conversation I had with Tom Petty. Love Tom Petty so much. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm gonna do a little freestyle here. Let me check my, oh yeah. I wanted to uh, talk about, um, about, what's that? Oh, all right. Well, no more of those Eddie photos. Yes, someone said, I went to a random bar by MSG after night two, 2016. Anyway, you walk in with a crazy amount of pizza. It's pretty surreal to see you shooting and then show you party. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, so, so anyway, uh, you know what? Why don't um, I wander around? I'll pick out a couple of photographs because people um, will also pick out some, uh, some questions that people are asking now. But... Um, I just figure I'll show you around a little bit more. Um, talk about some of these images. Um, I remember somebody asking me about this um, Chris Cornell photograph, which I took at, I believe it was the Fox Theater um, when Soundgarden got back together. 
and it was a great uh, great opportunity for me. I love Soundgarden. I hadn't ever done a portrait of the whole band, and I spent uh, the whole day with them. Um, and I had known Chris uh, from Audio Slave, and of course I knew Matt Cameron, and so it really made it comfortable, and we just jumped right in, and I got some beautiful photographs, and this was during uh, the sound check. Um, so I was about that fish uh, this one here. Look at that! Look at that little guy right there. Oh, a guy! It's a girl. Look at that little girl right there. Hi, Sydney. Sydney. She's hanging with us today. She's hanging with Bob Dylan. Aw, she looks so cute. <laughs> um, so uh, we could talk about this uh, <coughs> this fish photograph right here. Um, I think um. That's one of my favorite photographs because it shows the spontaneity that happens when you're doing a shoot. Like we were photographing at Fishman's Place in Vermont and uh, we decided um, it started to snow. We didn't expect it to, but it was snowing like crazy. We decided let's go outside and everybody was looking for their jacket and Trey had this coat in the back of his car. He put it on and as we wandered out, he reached in the pocket and he didn't really say anything. I must, he must have found a balloon in there and he picked it up and blew it up. And I was like, oh, this is perfect. Look at the, the way the colors play off each other. And um, I don't know, have you, have you guys seen um, what Trey is doing on, uh, on, on Instagram? He's, he's releasing some songs, he's talking with people. He's just, you know, he's just really killing it. He's taking this moment to be really creative and I, and I really love that. This is another favorite fish image of mine um, right here. Uh, it's uh, at the barn in Vermont. And uh, Trey's just in the zone, standing up on his um, on the on the stool while the band's playing. And uh, watch out for Sydney oh. over there. No? Okay, <laughs> Sid. Um, this Patty Smith photograph is another favorite of mine. Um, Patty, being from New Jersey, um, my wife Maria and I would always go to uh, see her at the Fast Lane. Uh, here in Asbury Park or the Stone Pony, many, many New Year's we would come and see uh, Patti Smith at the Stone Pony. Um, and she would always bring her mom, which was really sweet. And I got an opportunity to photograph her uh, and I went uh, record shopping. I got the assignment from Michelle Romero at um, Entertainment Weekly and she said, just go record shopping with Patti and it'll be a good time. I think she'll enjoy it. You'll, have, you'll, you'll enjoy it. So we went and it was incredible. I was a little intimidated. I'm a big fan of hers, uh, but she was super sweet and she went in and did some record shopping. And I asked her, uh, would you mind uh, sitting for uh, a photograph, like a portrait, um, after I had done a lot of just documentary style. I said, pick a, pick a record that you love. So she grabs this Love Supreme record. She holds it up and she says, you know, I buy this record whenever I'm at a yard sale, a garage sale, a used record store. I probably have six or seven of these records at home, but I can't stand to see them sitting in the bin and not getting played. Um, so I always loved that story. And this was, this was um, at Subterranean Records in New York City. How are we, how we doing on time, Nee? We're at 3.30. 3.30? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, okay. Well, let me just remind you guys, if whoever doesn't follow me on Instagram, it would be great to follow me, uh, Danny Bones 64 on Instagram. Um, anybody who wants to purchase one of these photographs, you can DM Tina Karekis at um, Transparent Clinch Instagram. Uh, she'll be glad to help out. Uh, I did want to mention also that we're going to run this uh, sale through Sunday. So you have time to place an order and to um, you know, inquire, talk to Tina about it. Um, we'll be very flexible as we really are looking forward to um, raising some money for Interfaith Neighbors and for Asbury Park Dinner Table. Again, you know, with thanks to iStar and the Asbury Hotel, Salt Hotels, um, and, uh, and certainly to our crew here, Tina uh, and uh, Jesse, um, and, uh, and we really you know, appreciate you guys, all the help that you have given us. And um, I do want to give a shout out to, and I know I'm going to forget some people, I'm sorry, I may, I, may I, I did write some down, but the people who have played here has been amazing. Right here on this stage, um, we have had um, 
so many great artists here, starting with uh, Rachel Anna Dotkin, who was one of the first to come and play here um, and sort of set the tone and bring all her friends here to the gallery to play for us and with us. Um, we've had the Mercury Brothers, and we've had Pam Flores, and Tara Dente, and Lowlight, and uh, American Trappist, and G. Love has been here and played. Gary Clark Jr. has been here and played. Brian Fallon uh, from Gaslight Anthem, and his new record, Local Honey, is amazing. Um, we've had Mike McCready in here jamming with us, Robert Randolph. Um, it's, uh, it's just incredible. It's, it's such a great, great bunch of people. And uh, we also have had, um, <laughs> we also have the High Anxiety Blues Band, which is uh, when a bunch of people uh, get together, myself, Rachel, uh, Rachel plays drums, keyboards, guitar, whatever, uh, and we pull a team together and we just run through all these blues songs or like songs by the band or, uh, you know, or some originals and stuff. It's just, it's just a lot of fun. And uh, I hope I didn't leave, what's that? I hope I didn't leave anybody out. Well, Has Sunshine's Pass played? Yeah. And, and Sunshine's Pass. And the yeah. Resistance Revival Choir. Oh, and the Resistance Revival Choir. That was awesome. Oh, uh, that was that was amazing. <laughs> that was. And and you know, just we appreciate all those all those folks who have come here and played. Um so I'm gonna uh again um encourage you if you can to donate to the charities, uh to purchase a photograph. They can come framed, they can be I'm going to show, I'm going to go through my flat file, which has a lot of images to choose from um, that are really just like, if you purchase them, we can send them out, you know, sometime next week um, and, uh, and, and you'll have them soon. So uh, let's go with um, this Bruce Springsteen photograph right here. Um, when Bruce was uh, playing in, um, on Broadway, um, when Bruce was playing on Broadway, he pretty much was living in New York City. He was basically there all the time. And, and really, he was kind of the king of New York. I mean, he, he was everywhere. He was, you know, in all the papers. And, 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 and the shows were just sold out at the Walter Kerr Theater. Sold out, sold out, sold out. I was lucky enough to go to a lot of the shows to hang out and be the guy that photographed the shows as well as, um, uh, you know, it, it, I was allowed to go backstage before the shows and, and document. Um, and uh, I'm sure some of you may have seen the show or seen Tom Zimney's film. Um, they're incredible. Uh, you, you should see it if you haven't already. It's very moving. Um, but anyway, I, I, I texted Bruce and said, Bruce, uh, in fact, I, I, I had run into him at one of the shows and said, uh, you know, you're living in New York. Why don't we get together someday and, and we'll, uh, we'll just wander around and shoot some photographs. You know, you're here, you're in New York. It's really happening. It's a big part of your life. It's a great moment. Let's take some photos. So he agreed. And uh, we made a date. Uh, I said, let's do it on a Wednesday. We'll meet at 2 o'clock. Let's meet over near Central Park. And uh, that day came. I checked in with him in the morning. And he said, yeah, I'm, I'm ready to go. And then this strange, like, snowstorm blew through. And I texted him. I said, you, you know, the light's probably going to be beautiful. We should, we should still do this. Uh, and if you're up for it, it'll be great. And he said, yeah, sure, I'll do it. So uh, we go to um, Central Park, Cody, my assistant, and I, and we were waiting in Central Park over there by, right by the, um, uh, by, uh, the Dakota, uh, where John and Yoko lived. And, um, and we were waiting for Bruce, and I get a text from Bruce. He says, I'm having trouble catching a cab. I should be here <laughs> soon. <laughs> and I said, okay, uh, we'll wait for you. Uh, so about 15 minutes later, Bruce rolls out of a cab, uh, you know, puts up his umbrella and wanders over. And, uh, and he says, boy, I hope you got a plan. <laughs> and I said, well, we, you know, we've been wandering. We came early. We scouted. I got a plan. And we literally walked about 20 yards from the cab. And I saw this moment in front of me and the way the, the vanishing point of the buildings, the beautiful light, the Dakota behind him. And I said, let's just stop here and we'll do this one, a shot here. And um, it's funny, at first I wasn't that crazy about the, um, about the bike, uh, um, uh, or what do you call Petty those cabs. things? Petty cabs. Petty cabs. Yeah. I wasn't excited about the pedicabs. <laughs> but as, as I look at it, it really does, it brings it all together and makes it almost a little more timeless because they're, they're covered up. And, yeah. and, uh, and I literally, these were some of the first frames I shot. And then I spent another, um, you know, 
30, 40 minutes walking around Central Park with Bruce and shooting images in there, which was really cool. Magical. Yeah. 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 We love it. Um, and uh, so there's that. Um, and um, you know what? Let's go over here and we'll look at some images. There's plenty more, you know, Beastie Boys and the Foo Fighters and all these bands that I love, love and hang out with. Um, you know, a lot of my heroes, Neil Young and Tom Waits. We got Green Day. As I look around, Patti Smith, Stevie Nicks, Jay Z, Tupac. That Tupac photograph, amazing moment for me, having photographed him for Rolling Stone magazine. And in the middle of the shoot, he took off his shirt so that we could change what he was wearing. And I saw all his tattoos, and I said, "Wait a minute, I think I want to do I want to do a photograph without your shirt." And he was like. Absolutely. Uh, and he was a real pro. He really was uh, present. And it's nice. I love, I love when someone's present, when someone contributes, whether it's in a really big way with a lots of props like Tom Waits or, you know, or when it's a real simple way when somebody just like really reveals himself in front of the camera. And sometimes you got to work for it. And with Tupac, it was, it was like real natural and it felt great. So um, this here is a flat file that we have. Um, and uh, a lot of these photographs are going to be um, available for the sale. And like I said, they're going to be right here. Very easy to grab. Um, this is Stevie Nicks' photograph. Um, this is from the first day I met Eddie Vedder. At Lollapalooza, 1992. Um, I love this photograph here of these women. <laughs> this is my favorite. Maggie Rogers, Brandi Carlisle, Phoebe Bridgers, Mavis Staples. So good. At Newport Folk Festival. I mean, come on. Is there a more joyful photograph? <laughs> mm -hmm. Have you guys seen my, um, my DC Photos of Joy on Instagram? It's a good one. You should check it out. Now, these are 8x10s. This is an 11 by 14 to give you an idea. This is a 16 by 20. This is another 16 by 20, but I have to show it off because it's one of my favorites. Bruce backstage on Broadway. And that is me peeking in right there <laughs> between Bob Dylan and Paul Newman. Um, so uh, let's go through some of these and be sure to, um, I want to remind you, follow me on Instagram, DannyBone64. Please follow Transparent Clinch also. We're doing a lot of cool stuff here. We do a lot, of give back to the community a lot. And uh, it's, it's, it's super cool and we'd love to, uh, to share, share that stuff with you. Uh, again, I want to remember to donate to um, Asbury Park Dinner Table, to um, interfaith. Uh, interfaith Neighbors. Thank, Thank you. They're using all their money for a COVID-19 emergency yeah. relief fund. I'm just sorry. Yeah. Yes. yeah. They're, they're all involved in COVID-19 uh, relief, which is, is very cool. And it's all we know these people are on the ground. We see them around. I talked to my buddy Tim Donnelly. He sees them running all around and taking care of business here in Asbury. It's, uh, it's really important. Um, uh, I shouted out my, all my friends, Jackson Pines, Tara Dente, Gary Clark Jr., G. Love, McCready. Oh yeah, I, got, I remembered all that stuff. Man, I, I'm <laughs> You're good. on fire. Oh man, Blind Melon. Oh, Blind Melon, um, you know, Shannon Hoon. Um, was a good friend of mine, the band's still a good friend of mine. Uh, this photograph I took in Amsterdam. <laughs> and uh, just so you know, we have great partners for this film now. It's been a long time. I appreciate everybody, really appreciate everybody um, who w participated in the Kickstarter and, and are being patient. But you know, this, um, this COVID has slowed down a lot of things, but we really are um, we have Live Nation on board with us and Double E Productions, Eric Eisner, um, really helping us, uh, Oscilloscope also, helping us get this film out. It's all together. We're about to make it happen. 
our wait is hopefully almost over. Um, so, you know, uh, this is kind of a blind melon pile here in Amsterdam. I'm gonna whip through these, Nina. You stay right with me there. Shannon Hoon in front of a Hell's Angels truck. This reminds me of the Neil Young's After the Gold Rush album cover, if anybody's familiar with that. Um, are there any new um, new questions come through? That we... I just saw one that yeah. asked, um, I lost who it was, but it asked, how does being a musician relate to, tie into you being a photographer hmm. with your photography? Oh, wow, that's a great question. Whoever asked that one, I like it. Um, I think that, you know, being a musician, um, for me, I, I think, you know, I always tell people, especially younger people, I say, you know, like, learn to play an instrument so that you can communicate with people in a different way. You can have a musical conversation with someone. And it really is, uh, it's something that's hard to explain and it's really a wonderful thing. And I think that when I, you know, I hang out with people you know, and they know that I play music, I think they feel that I understand, you know, being an artist and everything, an artist, a visual artist, and being able to play music. It kind of um, cuts through some of the, the fat, and I get right in there and, like, get to know people easier, and it's really uh, strengthened a lot of my friendships and stuff with people who've allowed me to sit in with them, like Gary Clark Jr. and My Morning Jacket, and, you know, um, Willie Nelson, and uh, Springsteen, and, you know, uh, Brian Fallon and stuff. It's uh, it's, it's a real blessing, I have to say. And by the way, it was Caroline Maine who asked the question. Oh, she thank just... you, Caroline. Oh, here's a shot of Shannon. Uh, he loved animals, and he was here he was playing with a cat in Amsterdam. What time is it, Neen? How much time we got? It's 3.42. Woo! Okay. So, um, <coughs> there, you know, if anybody um, sees an image uh, that they like and they want to, you know, just hit me up or, you know, if you're really serious about uh, purchasing something, um, we'll go the extra mile and make sure that we find it for you. Um, so this is um, a lot of blind melon here. Um, this is the Springsteen image at 16 by 20. Um, this is uh, another favorite of mine. This is an eight by 10 of Bruce Springsteen. This is a great image for Springsteen fans. And uh, I have a handful of those as well. Uh, this is pretty cool. This is um, this is Bruce and, um, um, sorry, I'm brain freezing. Uh, Bruce and Mike Ness from uh, Social Distortion uh, from the See Here Now Festival. I love this one. Uh, shot on my Leica. Um, this is a, uh, no, this is, I guess, the Bruce Springsteen file. <laughs> so I'm going to just cruise through these because we don't want to, we don't have a ton of time left. This is uh, Pearl Jam. Uh, I know people often ask me about this. This, uh, oh, this is, we, we talked about this, but here's a 16 by 20 ready to go out the door. Fish and Trey's Barn. Very nice. Go fast here. Cruising, cruising. <laughs> um, this is cool. This is uh, Dead & Co. I did all the press for their first tour. Um, these are some little one-offs here that I love. This I love Elvis Costello. <laughs> Sharp Dressed Man. Fire. Elvis Costello and I have had many of hat conversations. <laughs> Somebody asked what kind of paper are the photos printed on? Oh, these are, um, are, are printed, these are um, digital, um, archival digital prints printed in my studio. Uh, and it's Hannah Mule, uh, I'm probably saying it wrong. Um, and I'm not sure exactly the number because it's just really not my strength to be technically yeah, oriented. I put you on the spot. But, uh, but it is Hannah, Hannah Mule, is that how you say it? But it's a beautiful paper and it's not super glossy. It has a nice little pearl sheen to it. And uh, I mean, it really does make a difference when you take it out of the plastic. Ooh. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Somebody wants to know about the John Prine story. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh goodness, John Prine. 
I will get to that story. Okay. This is a beauty one right here. This, I have to take the plastic out because it's got like some, some dust on it. This is um, Churches. Love this band. Oh, that's beautiful. Uh, I took this out in Joshua Tree. Remember that, Christopher? <laughs> there you go. Uh, we've got this uh, awesome uh, Gary Clark Jr. Taken in Austin, Texas. Um, Citizen Cope. Clarence is. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull this one out too just because. We love Clarence, Citizen Cope. It's been a favorite of our family for a long time. True. And uh, his music's amazing. Uh, I took this in Memphis. I chose Memphis, by the way. I chose Memphis for the shoot, having not talked to Clarence about it um, other than we wanted to go somewhere to photograph. Let's just go somewhere cool. It's got a great vibe. And uh, I had just been to Memphis to photograph B.B. King. And uh, I said, what about Memphis? And he was like, I love that idea. And I was like, there's a great spot. I had a couple locations worked out. We get down there and he goes, you know, uh, I was born in Memphis. Oh my, oh my gosh. gosh. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. I think that's what happened. <laughs> He's born there I don't now. really remember. That's why I take pictures. Uh, this is uh, Dr. John. Looks great. Are closed. His eyes are closed and his um, eyeballs were painted on his eyelids. <laughs> eyelids. Um, and it was the inspiration for my Nathaniel Rateliff video that I did recently. Oh. If you watch the video, the surprise is at the end. Wait for it. <laughs> um, so, um, let's see. Ah, here we go. A couple of good ones here. Uh, Gaslight Anthem at Bonnaroo. This is my favorite spot to be. My favorite spot to be is behind the drum kit, behind the amplifier. So when I feel like something's gonna happen, I can jump out and grab it. Um, this again, really, this is one of my favorites too. Oh wow, look at this, this a couple of good ones here. Um, Jay-Z at Bonnaroo. Uh, I have been to every Bonnaroo that has been in existence. I've got it well documented. <laughs> Um, this is Newport Folk Festival, and this is um, Jason Isbell with um, Bob Dylan's guitar. Apparently, when Dylan flew back from going electric at Newport Folk Festival, he left his guitar in the helicopter that took him back, or the airplane that took him back that evening. And nobody seemed to care, and apparently the pilot grabbed the guitar and he tried to find management, and he left, left messages, and whatever. Nobody cared. They were just like, yeah, whatever. And so he put it under, under his bed. And about 30 years later, the guy pulled it out and said, here's the guitar that Bob Dylan went electric with. <laughs> and we bought it to uh, Newport Folk. And uh, my friend Colleen was making a film and everybody was playing the guitar. And I got the picture of, uh, of um, Jason Isbell. This is um, Brittany Howard. Um, we did some music videos for the Alabama Shakes and for her recent solo record, which I shot the uh, album cover for. Um, but we did four uh, no edit videos for the last Alabama Shakes record and for her new record. And uh, my buddy Josh Goldman and I uh, filmed them, no edits, uh, and they're really awesome. They're raw, they're live recorded right there. It's very exciting. By the way, it's um, 350. Yeah, 350. Okay. Um, what is that one other thing I wanted to talk about? Um, Patty Smith. Um, you know, there's just a lot of good stuff in here, y'all. I'm gonna wing through these. Tom Tom Waits. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> I've done a lot of shoots with Tom Waits tonight. I love photographing him because he's just a real collaborator. He brings a lot of props and, and all that. Margot Price. Thinking of her and Jeremy. Um, let's see this Radiohead in front of the Twin Towers when they did their show at Liberty Island. We rode over, my whole family rode over with the band 
to this show. And the kids were like three years old or whatever. <laughs> Nina was like a peanut, a little peanut. Um, I thought there was something else that was that was going to. Can you tell people how to purchase? Um, she say, oh, how to purchase them? A lot of people keep, oh. just for the people that got in a little late. Oh, yeah, late. the people that got in late. Um, so what you can do is you can email Tina. It's on my um, Instagram, my last post, or the post before that. Email Tina Karekis, K-E-R-E-K-E-S, at gmail.com. She will um, give you all the information you need. Um, or you can DM her at Transparent Clinch. Instagram and that's our Instagram for the gallery I encourage you to to uh, to follow transparent clinch follow me um, and uh, I should film this on the door too and like that yeah. and um, also uh, this is um, here's this is the 8 by 10s 16 by 20s 11 by 14s and Tina will have all this information um, things are different if they're framed. Some of them are mounted on archival uh, board, like this Chris Cornell one. It's basically mounted on like a beautiful archival board with a, a cleat that allows you to hang it up like that. Um, and these are all available for the sale. These are also, I just want to point this out and then I'll answer some questions. These are the 8x10s. These are the smaller images that are um, less expensive. This is Bruce in Philadelphia. Um, we have Bruce and the E Street Band. You don't have, have much time left. Fish. Clifford Ball. Um, I was looking for the Eddie jumping photo. That's what I was looking for. Um, I wanted to talk about that. I guess I'll have to do another one. Um, so we have this, we have um, Childish Gambino at Bonnaroo, we have this, um, of course you saw this already, but this is the Tupac image, signed with a silver pen. Um, oh, shit, shoot, I mean, um, so, darn, I was going to give away a print to someone. Um, so if you, if you can, can, you can do it right, up? you can do it right now if you everyone guys, comments. Uh, comment. Somebody's got a comment. Um, comment your favorite. Just comment, comment on your, what's that? I was going to say yes, your favorite uh, harmonica player. Oh, yes, my favorite harmonica player. No, name, no. A, name a good harmonica player. And uh, I'm going to pick somebody Here. and I'm going to, uh, I'll show the print, I'll state your name, and, um, and, then, um, uh, and then you can DM Tina. Now. Yeah, right now. Uh, yeah. Go ahead and um, tell me who your favorite harmonica player is. It's gonna be a little delayed. Okay. Harmonica player? Yeah. I don't even, oh. Oh, I gotta like this one, okay. Analog Shots. Analog Shots with Stevie Wonder. That's it. He's getting one. He's getting a print. Analog shots. Analog shots. DM. We see you with yep. Stevie Wonder. DM yep, yep. transparent clinch. DM transparent clinch, please. Yeah, that's good, good, good. Oh man. All right. Um, give it a. Give it oh, a. Oh, David Foster with the Danny Clinch is a great harmonica. <laughs> that's oh, a man. good answer. That's a good answer. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna wait for another one that I like. And. Uh, Joe, you will get nothing. <laughs> Joe Lentini. Um, let's see. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait till one just. Hits yeah. Me. So the first one, just yeah. a reminder, was Analog Shots. DM. Analog Shots. DM, DM Tina. Tina. At Transparent Clinch. Say it again, yeah. Uh huh. Your favorite Got it. Uh, I think I'm gonna go with um, S. What? S B S burn bomb one. S burn bomb one. Yeah. James Cotton. Ooh. Boom. Talking to me back last night. I was listening to James Cotton. I was actually practicing to the Muddy Waters band live at Mr. Kelly's. James Cotton on my mom. Yep. Um. Okay. So. S burn. 
I'm very grateful for everybody who's come out. Um, I, you know, I have a couple more of these. Just I want to show the eight by ten so people know that they're available. Fish, we got it. Uh, all that. Okay. So anyway, that's the mess we've made. <laughs> and uh, I want to thank everyone for coming. I want to thank iStar for having us. I want to thank um, uh, Tina, and I want to thank my family, Nina, Max, and Maria. Uh, hey, And I want to thank um, uh, both of our Asbury Park dinner table, Interfaith Neighbors. Please donate to them. Even if you can't buy a print, send them something. Uh, I really hope that you all um, will be good to each other, be kind to, to others, help out when you can. Um, I put on, on my website, dannyclinch.com, one of my new recent John Prine images that I love. Big love to John Prine, his wife Fiona and John. They were just so kind to me and I've, I, I've only known them for a short time and I feel like I've known them my whole life. And I really appreciate them and uh, I really appreciate you all. Uh, I hope um, we're gonna try and save this so that we can repost it so you can watch it again. Again, the sale's gonna go until um, Sunday. Sunday, Sunday evening, Eastern Standard Time. And uh, I'm gonna leave you with this photo of Nina. <laughs> so, all right, get over there, Maria. I'm gonna get you and Nina and Max. <laughs> all right, hop in there. Here we go. Clinches, I'll send it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, peace out, y'all. Peace out, y'all. Bye. Out, Bye. Thank you. <laughs>